Hello and welcome to Vidra Android channel and also welcome you to the series of video tutorials on develop Bluetooth 5.2 IoT applications with Thunderbolt BG22 which is basically from the Silicon Laptop. So in this tutorial, uh, that is a tutorial 4, uh, I am going to give you a basic introduction about the Bluetooth Low Energy which is also known as a BLE. So I am going to cover the basics of uh, BLE, how it looks like and how it is different from the Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Smart Ready so and how what is a gat and what is a gap so all these things i'm going to explain in this tutorial okay so let's move on so we have a two kinds of uh, uh, bluetooth technologies uh, maybe um, i would say there are three actually uh, one is a ble which is a bluetooth low energy the other one is a bluetooth classic and uh, we have a uh, one more technology called bluetooth smart ready which is a combination of both ble and uh, bluetooth classic so bluetooth classic is a very old and uh, uh, most of uh, the people are aware of this okay but bluetooth classic uh, have a more bandwidth and high power consumption and it's a highly standardized protocol and it is very difficult to understand even to develop the applications with the bluetooth classic so on the other hand we have a bluetooth low energy uh, which is having a, a low bandwidth and low power consumption and also easy to understand the protocol so we can easily develop the applications with the bluetooth low energy okay and uh, ble is also called as a bluetooth smart okay and we have one more technology called bluetooth smart ready uh, which is a combination of both ble and uh, bluetooth classic so we are going to see the ble uh, because uh, the ble uh, protocol is very easy to understand and even it is very easy to develop the applications with the ble so the BLE technologies nowadays we can see that uh, everywhere it is available uh, mostly used in uh, um, uh, low power applications uh, like uh, um, wearables uh, and uh, some input devices also okay now uh, if we coming to the differences between the BLE and the Bluetooth Classic so as I said uh, BLE has a low power uh, uh, consumption and it is also having a low cost and supported by majority of the platforms so and uh, it is very simple and easy to understand and uh, standard profiles to cover the key use cases uh, there are some uh, standard uh, profiles which are uh, um, provided by the uh, BLE seek so i will going to show in a later tutorials how we need to use uh, these standard profiles uh, using a simplicity studio version 5 so uh, i will show you in a later tutorials and then we have also customer specific profiles uh, to enable the faster development Okay, moving on uh, this is the uh, basic bluetooth stack uh, where we have on the top of we have a application layer and the bottom we have a bluetooth smart radio and so we have a apis uh, which will be used to communicate between the uh, bluetooth radio and the application so and also we have a, um, a gat which is also nothing but the generic attribute profile and then we have a um, l2 cap and then we have a link layer so and apart from this uh, we used to have a security manager and a generic access profile and in the generic access profile also which will be used for the um, uh, connections okay and uh, if you see here an application communicate with three elements of a stack mainly so the first one is a gap which is nothing but a generic access profile uh, which is basically handles everything about the connection uh, which is nothing but advertisements, connection parameters, everything. So all the connection uh, related to the BLE uh, connecting to a device, everything will be handled using a gap, which is nothing but a generic access profile. So whereas we have one more that is called a GAT, which is nothing but a generic attribute profile. So which is handles uh, everything within the connection. So after we connect uh, using a gap, okay. So gap basically handles the, all the connection parameters and everything. So how can we uh, send some commands or receive some data from the server uh, to the client? So basically if I say client means it's our mobile phone and server means you can take it as a, uh, a BLE device. So in our case, it is uh, nothing but uh, Thunderbolt BG22. You can use any BLE board from the silk and labs, no issues. And some applications, uh, we will also use the security manager for the, um, okay that is nothing but uh, basically which will be used for the security and which handles the security and encryption and decryption okay and so coming to gap so basically a uh, gap is used for the advertisements okay and uh, here i have uh, um, shown one diagram so generally BLE has total 40 channel which is ranging from 2402 to 2480 megahertz with a, a separation of uh, 2 megahertz so out of these 40 channels um, here uh, we have a um, 
three green channels uh, which are uh, 37 38 and 39 and all remaining channels are in uh, blue color okay so if you look at the green channel ones so which are three channels which are basically used for the advertisements and also we call them as a primary advertisement channels so whereas uh, the blue color ones which are also used for the uh, advertisements and also data transfer and they can also be called as a secondary advertisement channels or the data channels so here i have written here so three channels dedicated for the advertisements those are 37 38 and 39 advertisement packets has user data okay, and can be used as a broadcasting service in case of uh, uh, ibeacon uh, which is basically used for the iphones and then advertisement on all three channels basically it will take uh, 1.3 milliseconds and the delay between the advertisements can be uh, 20 milliseconds to 10 to 40 milliseconds uh, we can see how we can able to handle this um, uh, advertisement uh, timings or uh, channel timings and everything in the application code i will show you in the later tutorial how we can able to manipulate this um, connection travel um, okay now moving on uh, so gat we have okay um, so first we, first of all we we'll look at the uh, principles of the gat and uh, what are the transactions that we can perform with the gat protocol so uh, the typically uh, peripheral has a gat table uh, okay which is basically nothing but a, a gat server and gat server is located at the um, board uh, in our case it is a thunderbolt bg22 and uh, central uh, uh, manipulated uh, this gat table using a client that means that um, glad client is our uh, mobile app uh, through which we can able to manipulate the gat server okay so what kind of a transaction that we can perform using a um, the basic gat so from uh, we first we will look at the server to client so in our case maybe you can consider this as a bg22 and the client is nothing but uh, your mobile phone ah, okay and so we will ca we can have a indications and we can also have a, a notification uh, so we have a no application level acknowledgement uh, but much faster okay so we can have a uh, without acknowledgement also so whereas from the client to server we used to have a more options available uh, we can read from the server uh, and we can also write to the server and we can also perform some enable notifications and indications uh, write without response okay basically uh, no application level acknowledgement uh, but it will have a more more faster so write without response means we will write to the server but we will not get any acknowledgement so here i have shown you one um, uh, block diagram okay so uh, this is a gat client which is basically our mobile phone app so and uh, through mobile phone app we are reading these operations for example let's say read write notify and indicate and other hand uh, in the uh, bg22 side also we used to have a gat server as i explained here so let's take a, uh, uh, what kind of terminologies we have in, uh, in in the GAT. Okay, so we will have a profile. Uh, so here I took it as an example of heart rate. So it could be any other uh, um, any application. I would say okay. So every application, uh, every uh, piece of uh, data that we read, uh, uh, um, we can call that as a profile. In our case, it is a heart rate profile. So so every profile will have a uh, different kinds of services you might have a, a, a one profile can have a multiple services okay for example you can say gap service we have a device uh, information service and then we have a heart rate service so every service will have a, a universally unique identification number to identify that and then uh, below that we have a um, that means uh, every every um, service will have a different kinds of a characteristics so what kind of a, a characteristic you want to get from the uh, uh, maybe a server for example let's say heart rate measurement characteristic and uh, maybe you have a body sensor uh, location characteristics and even we uh, for every characteristics so we have a, a universal iniq identification number simply called as a uuid number okay and every characteristic can have uh, multiple uh, uh, attributes i would say and then so maybe we can have a declare and this uh, we have a declarations uh, declarations are nothing but notify property no security requirements such, um, something like that and then we have a characteristics okay so what kind of uh, uh, data we are going to read for example two to six bytes of data exposing using a heart rate reading 
and then we have a descriptors uh, basically used for the enable and disable the notifications okay and then coming to get database also this is what i am explaining uh, earlier so here we can see here profile so in our case we took it as a profile as a uh, heart rate okay and uh, in this uh, we used to have a two kinds of profiles one is adaptive profiles so these adapted profiles are basically defined by the bluetooth C. you can go to the bluetooth uh, the, uh, website and you can find out what are the um, um, what are the profiles that they are going to provide and then we used to also have a vendor specific profile to identify the boot okay and then we have a service uh, as i said uh, every profile will have a service and a service is nothing but a group of related characteristics you can see here we have a two characteristics under one uh, service okay and then basically we can take an example of measurement of a health thermometer maybe a location of a health thermometer and then we can see uh, characteristics if we if you, if you can look at the one characteristics here okay one user data so what kind of things we can expect we have a declaration attributes so what is that particular data we have and then how it can be manipulated so what are the values of the attributes we have okay values is the value basic value attributes basically holds the data itself and then we have a client characteristic configuration descriptors which is also uh, uh, shortly named as cccd okay uh, which basically used for the notification and indication control and then coming to uh, uh, attributes uh, we have a one record of the database which basically handles the address or uid okay so it determines the type of attribute enable or disable the notification which will also give you the permissions something like uh, read or write require inscription or authentication something like that and also provides the values so we will uh, come to uh, all these things um, while we are developing an application so at, at that point of time you will understand more uh, what are these uh, nomenclature and how to identify and all using the simplicity studio if you want more information about this uh, uh, bluetooth fundamentals so there is a user guide uh, provided by the silicon labs uh, the user guide number is uz103.14 which is nothing but a Bluetooth LE fundamentals. So he can uh, read this documentation thoroughly so that he will understand uh, better uh, what is actually Bluetooth low energy architecture. Okay, so this is what I'm explaining here actually, right? You can see I have uh, uh, took the different um, uh, image here. Okay, and then we, if you come down, uh, you will see the physical layer. Uh, okay, how uh, Bluetooth low energy channels and their frequencies okay and you will find everything in this uh, user guide okay so i recommended you to go through this and understand this okay how connection interval will look like okay what are the timelines we have okay how the bluetooth line the topologies we have okay so uh, i want uh, so go through this and then uh, let me know if you have any doubts okay, okay. so so that's all for this tutorial uh, if you like this video uh, please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching it